Hey, what's up, guys? David Glenn of davidglennrecording.com and theproaudiofiles.com. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about how to enhance your low end. And specifically, this video, we're going to talk about enhancing your low end when you're working with loops. You've got maybe sometimes a loop that comes in, or several loops. In this case, we have three where there's uh, bottom, there's kick, there's um, 808s or sub frequencies in those loops, and they're not quite jiving together, not working well together. Um, or they're not work, working well with your kicks um, or the bass, uh, all kinds of stuff. It could be a mess to deal with. So I'm going to pull open a track that I've been given recently by my new friend, Tim Moore, out of California. And uh, his wife has got a beautiful voice. Her name is Dasha Moore, the artist. And uh, the song is called My God is Big. Super stoked for them. This song's incredible. And uh, I'm excited to share it with you. So I'm going to hit play from the top. We're going to hear kind of the intro, the loops, how they're working together. And then I'll dive in and show you what I'm doing. cool so diving right in we've got three loops in this song and they're all doing different things so they work really nicely together I'm gonna solo those for you but first we're gonna bypass my processing and here's what I was given cool so in these loops, we've got some low-end stuff going on. We've got one, I hear a kind of a soft, fluffy 808 wannabe kind of thing going on. The other thing I hear is a, uh, a tighter kind of punchy kick that, I say punchy, but that uh, wants to be punchy. And those two aren't working really well together for me, and it doesn't fit with the song the way that they're going. So um, what I did is I took the liberty, like I often do, I'll take risks whenever clients send me, uh, send me work, but um, I wanted to redesign the low end. So instead of going with that, what I did is I approached these clicks, I'm going to play one more time actually without my processing, I'll add my processing in and then we'll go over the kicks. And then now with my... Cool. So what I did is I pulled open, and in each of these, I applied Alloy 2's um, multi-band transient designer. I love this thing. I'm using it in all kinds of stuff now. You can control the bands. You got three to play with. Uh, in this case, I increase the attack and everything, remove the sustain. I wanted it to be tighter. I wanted it to feel a little bit of movement within it. Um, and uh, I did that for all three to tempo. And um, and I sucked all the low end out of everything. So I've got a couple of EQs on here. I'm pulling all the low end out. I don't want any of that because I'm going to redesign it. The first thing I heard was the punch kick. So I pulled open my new favorite uh, plug-in for, for kicks. Uh, for Pro Tools users, you have to have something like the Blue Cats patchwork to pull in VSTs. Um, they don't make an AAX yet. Uh, to my knowledge, I think they still don't. Um, so Nicky Romero's kick from Sonic Academy. Uh incredible plugin you can take your kicks i'll probably do a whole tutorial just on this plugin but um you can design your own kick so you can take uh the attack the sustain the release you can control all of that you can set it the way you want you can increase or decrease your length you can automate this thing there's all kinds of great crazy stuff you can do you can pick your click sound uh you can drive it blah 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 the point in this tutorial is i wanted a, a kick that would fit this track better than what was in the in the loops so i created this guy and this is what it sounds like. Cool. And then to top it off, we had that kind of uh, sub pulsing 808 wannabe track underneath. So I recreated that one as well. Let's get rid of this guy and pull open another instance of kick. And uh, this thing's incredible again, man. I'm just going crazy over it. But I just boosted the sustain all the way up. The length of it is at 3,000. That's a max. And this is what I got with it. Cool. 
just a nice big beautiful low end that I think I may have tweaked a little bit with some EQ but nothing too crazy um, there I gave it a little of 100 and pulled out a little mud and then a little bit at 30 just because it felt good you can take note of that but a uh, couple things going on in this one let's hear it one more time in the track here's without processing and without my kicks cool and then now we're going to try to get this back in quickly oh, I don't have them selected and I'm using the shortcut and with my kicks Very cool. So what do I want you to learn from this? Uh, for one, you got to be careful because if you're working with new clients, producers, sometimes you're stepping on their toes when you're going to redesign their kicks or change out their loops. So make sure you get permission or if you're going to take that risk, uh, be prepared that they may not like it and you may have to go in and, and fix what you've done. Um, but the main thing I want you to get from this is don't be afraid to take risk. Go in, suck the low end out, listen to the pattern of the kick and see if you can do better for the track. If the track is calling for something a little bit more bold, a little bigger, tighter, punchier, whatever the case may be, uh, don't be afraid to go in and recreate that yourself. Um, and uh, and that's the moral of the story. So anyways, hope you guys are learning something from that. Keep the questions coming. David at davidglennrecording.com. So much stuff on the way. We just had a baby, my wife and I, and we're super uh, tired, but I'm back at making these tutorials. I'm super excited and lots of great stuff to come. So. We'll catch you guys on the next one.